I don't oppose war in all circumstances. And when I look out over this crowd today, I know there is no shortage of patriots or patriotism. What I do oppose is a dumb war. Nine years ago, in 2002, an Illinois state senator named Barack Obama gave a speech against the Iraq war before that war began. Nine years ago, in 2002, a senior U.S. senator from the great state of Delaware, Joe Biden, along with some fellow ambitious Democrats, including Senator Hillary Clinton of New York, voted to authorize the use of military force in Iraq. Two-thirds of House Democrats voted against that authorization for the use of force, but it did pass easily, and in 2003, the United States invaded Iraq. Now, eight and a half years later, U.S. troops are finally all coming home. Joe Biden became a crusading opponent of the Iraq war from his powerful position as chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Hillary Clinton barely missed becoming the Democratic nominee for president in 2008. Her vote for the war did not help her in that race. She eventually would become Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in the administration of President Barack Obama and Vice President Joe Biden, who promised that they would bring the war in Iraq to a responsible end. In a speech this past October, we learned from President Obama what that ending would look like. Over the next two months, our troops in Iraq, tens of thousands of them, will pack up their gear and board convoys for the journey home. The last American soldier will cross the border out of Iraq with their held, heads held high, proud of their success, and knowing that the American people stand united in our support for our troops. That is how America's military efforts in Iraq will end. Across America, our servicemen and women will be reunited with their families. Today, I can say that our troops in Iraq will definitely be home for the holidays. Since that statement in October, U.S. troops in Iraq have been leaving Iraq at a quick pace. Lately, they've been leaving at a rate of 500 a day. Republicans have criticized the impending end of the Iraq war, saying that we should stay there longer. Vice President Cheney saying he thinks the United States should have negotiated to keep 15 or 20,000 American troops in Iraq. The pro-war Washington Post editorial page lamenting today that the administration didn't try very hard to leave thousands of American troops in Iraq. John McCain has been calling bringing the troops home a failure. If ending the war represents failure, what would success be? The administration sees ending the war as success. In their words, they see it as a promise kept. President Obama and I came to office absolutely determined to bring this war to a responsible end and to keep the promise we made to the American people and the people of Iraq that we would meet our commitments. We will keep our promise to remove our remaining troops from Iraq, which when we came to office, numbered 140,000 American forces. Where I come from, where the President comes from, a promise made is a promise kept, and we are keeping our promise. Vice President Biden speaking in Iraq earlier this month. Vice President Biden took, to time, took time today to speak with me here in Washington. We are leaving Iraq with no residual force left behind. Everybody's coming home. Correct. Absolutely. Um, had the Iraqi government requested that 10 or 15 or 20,000 American troops stay behind on an indefinite basis, would, would you have supported that? Was there any U.S. objective that would have been met by keeping more troops there for longer? No, not troops in that number at all. I don't think that would have ever I don't think we, we would have responded positively to that. Uh, had they come back and said, we need some troops to help us train in country, these troops are finished this, that we, we would have considered. But the idea of keeping 20,000 troops there now, and I don't think it would have had any impact. The, um... Any positive impact, particularly in, look, one of the things about Iraq is we made a commitment we were going to leave. The Iraqi people who've been occupied in the past looked and really wondered, do these guys really mean it? Didn't they come for our oil? We didn't take their oil. And as I said to those troops they're leaving, you're leaving in the tradition of American forces with only thing you're leaving with is your honor and a job well done. And that made, has, made a, has made a real impression on the Iraqi people. 
There's more of this interview to come. I just want to point out, though, the, the, the vice president there bluntly rebutting Republicans criticizing the end of the war right now, including former Vice President Dick Cheney, Senator McCain, presidential contender Mitt Romney and others. All of those Republicans have said that the U.S. wanted to persuade the Iraqi government to accept a large contingent of many thousands of American troops to stay on in Iraq. They have alleged that we failed to get Iraq's permission for something that we wanted. Mr. Cheney saying it should have been something on the order of 20,000 troops not coming home. Vice President Biden today flatly telling me no. That even if Iraq had asked us for that many U.S. troops to stay, the administration would not have agreed. That is news. Uh, there's more news ahead from my exclusive interview today with Vice President Biden. I tell you, I feel like uh, I feel like I did something that uh, or participated in something being done that I can be proud of the rest of my life.